In this episode, we're going to build our own dry dustless sandblast system. This will allow us to do spot sandblasting on our truck project in rain gutters and window channels and such, uh, where it's hard to get to with a DA sander. Uh, we're going to use off-the-shelf components. This is going to be a very simple modification. Uh, it's not meant to sandblast the whole cab, but will let us do, um, you know, like small areas uh, that we can't get to. and keep us from having to roll it outside to use a sandblaster and not make a mess in the shop here. This is a Harbor Freight sandblast gun I purchased uh, recently. Uh, came with a hopper and uh, the hose and everything. I paid about 24 bucks for it with a, on sale uh, and a um, vacuum head for a, um, it's got the brush attachment for my rigid shop vac. Now the reason I picked this sandblaster, it's got a slim profile. Um, I need to marry these two together. I need to um, bore this vacuum attachment for this sandblast gun. I had another sandblast gun uh, this one here, this Campbell Hossfield, as you can see it's much bulkier uh, body. This one is, is pretty slim, uh, so I think it'll work better for, for this application. So I'm going to uh, mark this on the center line and drill a three quarter inch hole and probably have to do a little filing to get it to fit. Uh, something like that. That's that's pretty close. I'm going to have to elongate that slot a little bit to straighten it out. I want this uh, nozzle to be on the same center line as this uh, brush here. All right, that seems like a pretty close fit. It's uh, pretty snug all the way around there. Uh, I've got where the nozzle is just about uh, three eighths of an inch below this flange here, the hard flange, uh, to be far enough away from the material. Now I'm gonna, these, these uh, bristles are pretty flimsy. They're probably gonna suck in and uh, keep it from working right. I'm gonna trim give it a little haircut, uh, cut about half the length of these uh, bristles off. And uh, that should make it a little stiffer by being shorter. Okay, I've shortened it about half the length. That'll make it a little stiffer and less likely to suck in and clog up the, uh, the flow of the vacuum. Um, this will put, like I said, this is a pretty snug fit in here. And um, that puts the nozzle about three eighths of an inch below the plastic, the hard plastic. And let me uh, get some irregular surfaces with this, this brush here. Now I'm just probably gonna take uh, some tie wraps or something like that and maybe a hose clamp or tie wraps and hold these two together. That way it could be a one-handed operation. All right, we've got everything assembled with our 
uh, abrasive blaster and um, I've got it hooked up to the vacuum cleaner. I'm going to turn it on in a second and we're going to um, try this uh, piece of sheet metal. Uh, it's got automotive paint on it and rust and uh, we'll, we'll see how it does. This is 80 grit glass bead. Right, that seemed to work pretty good. Um, it uh, did have a little bit of um, spray out on the uh, brush that, that escaped, uh, but it but it worked all in all pretty good. Um, it, as you can see, it it did get the paint off and the rust. Uh, of course, the downside to this thing you can't see exactly what you're doing, uh, so you need to. You know, be able to aim instinctively like you were pointing your finger or a pistol, um, you know, to, to get the area and then, uh, you know, move past it to see what you're doing, uh, see if you need to adjust your, your uh, positioning. Now, um, when I assembled this, of course, this is specifically with a Harbor Freight uh, abrasive blaster and a rigid shop vac. With the one and seven eighths inch hose, and the uh, brush head was a one and seven eighths by one and a quarter um, fitting on here. So if you wanted to build it like exactly like I did, that's those are the exact components. You could do it, I'm sure, with uh, other brands and other components. You're just going to have to adjust the construction details. Um, but I think it, I think it worked pretty good. Oh, I'd like to also point out that uh, I in uh, do not intend to do much more than nooks and crannies and crevices and up into uh, tight corners with this setup. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to try to uh, strip an entire car like this. It would, you know, you can't see what you're doing and it would take you forever. But but for like getting in, in grooves and stuff, if you're doing DA sanding for the rest of it, this would, uh, you know, get into areas you, that you couldn't otherwise. And also for rust pits and stuff like that, the DA would go right over top of it. Now. Um, I will show you uh, the dust collection setup in a minute. But let me also point out that uh, you know if you like this setup, you don't want to make your own, or you think it's a hokey setup. Uh, there are commercially available units that are very similar to this. I found out after I after I decided to make this, uh, and they range in price from about six hundred and fifty dollars on the low end, uh, which is a siphon type uh, abrasive blaster with a vacuum built onto it and uh, up to thousands and thousands of dollars for a industrial type unit. Uh, this is the collection unit that I'm using between the vacuum cleaner and um, the uh, sandblast head. Um, it's called a dust topper. I got it from Home Depot, I think it was like 35 bucks. Uh, it fits on top of a drywall bucket. And just a minute, let me get this out. So anyhow, it fits on top of the drywall bucket and separates out whatever, whatever goes through the vacuum or most of it before it gets into the vacuum itself. Makes it a little easier to uh, reclaim your, your blast media. All right, I think that was a successful experiment. Uh, it takes off the paint and the rust uh, pretty well and contains the grit blast um, inside the vacuum, keeps it from flying all over the place. Uh, so that'll come in handy on uh, my project here. Uh, I please hope you uh, subscribe. If you like this type of content, I'll be coming up with some more videos soon. Um, comment if you would, I appreciate it. Have a good day, thanks.